All right, guys, so, so we're stripping the posterior muscles now, the uh, superficial posterior muscles, the gastrocnemius and the solus, and now we're looking at the deep group. This is the posterior flexor group, and this is comprised of four muscles. Three of, the, three of these muscles are plantar flexor muscles, and the other one, this one, the palpiteus, this one acts on the knee. And if you, as you can see, it's definitely not as long. Okay, so here are the posterior, the deep muscles. You see how much longer and uh, strainier they are, and the palpiteus, zoom in there you can see it's a lot shorter and so when this muscle constricts it acts on the knee it does not act on the foot at all and you can see here its or origin is on the lateral aspect of the femur wrapping around the posterior of the tibia so when it constricts it aids in bending the knee and flexing the knee all right so so looking at the muscles that actually do aid in flexing the foot uh, the first one we're going to look at is the tibialis posterior okay so tibialis post tibialis posterior you can kind of guess as to where the location of that muscle is going to be. It's going to be on the posterior aspect of the tibia. It's kind of connected into the interosseous membrane that's in between the tibia and the fibula. And this this muscle, if you kind of see where it runs, it's going all the way down the posterior aspect of the leg. And then you'll see that it wraps around medially around the ankle. And then it attaches itself to the medial cuneiform bone of the uh, foot. Okay, of the tarsals. So if you could imagine when this muscle constricts, when it shortens, it's going to pull on this foot. It's going to pull on the foot and it's going to cause it to invert. So the, so the plantar part of the foot will face this opposite leg. Okay, so if you can kind of stretch out your foot and you can kind of, you can kind of invert your foot a little bit. So the, uh, the plantar, the bottom, the bottom part of your foot faces the opposite foot. That's, that's uh, the tibialis posterior that's doing that. All right, so now let's take a look at the muscles that are flexing, that are controlling the digits, the phalanges, your toes, your uh, digits one through five. And actually, let me talk about that real quick before I get into that muscle. How do we count our digits? So as I'm looking at my foot here, starting from the medial aspect of the foot, moving our way. Let me zoom in a little bit so I can see this better. From the medial aspect of our foot, so here's our toe. <coughs> so here's our phalanges right here. Here's our toe, so this is digit number one, and then two, three, four, five. So digit number five is your little pinky toe, your big toe is digit number one, all right? So the flexor digitoris, uh, digitorum longus, this muscle is responsible for flexing, as you can see here, digits number two through five, okay? So imagine when, some, when you're running and you're jumping, uh, these muscles are the ones that help keep that foot planted on the ground while you're f getting the full extension uh, up into the air. So when you jump, you know, if you jump it properly, your, your feet at the end of your jump are kind of pointing down. They're flexing, uh, they're flexing a plantar flexation down. And that's what these muscles, uh, this particular muscle aids in. So this is the flexor digitorum longus, and now the flexor hallucis, hallucis longus. And this one, helps to flex digit number one, okay? So your big toe, let me center this here, okay. So let's take a look at that. So as you can see here, your flexor hallucis longus, its point of origin is at the fibula, okay? So on the lateral aspect of the fibula and running down alongside the leg and wrapping around the ankle, wrapping around the ankle, so if you can follow it here, and then attaching itself to the distal phalange of the toe, allowing flexation of plantar flexation of the foot. Okay, all right. So that does it for your posterior group of the muscles. We talked about the superficial and the and the uh, the well the superficial and the deep aspect of the muscles. So what I'm thinking, what's going to happen is is that I'm most likely going to make uh, additional videos because this is getting kind of long. And there's actually one more thing that I wanted to show you. So what I wanted to do, uh, so we're looking at the leg, right? And we're going to take a look at the posterior aspect of the leg. And what I want you to do with me is that we're going to draw a transverse line and we're going to make a cut. And what we're going to do when we make that cut, we're going to kind of open up the leg and we're going to look down into the leg. So here's that cut, all right? So your the anterior aspect of the leg is right here and then the posterior aspect is in the back. Uh, so I'm going to kind of grade out and you're looking at the bones right there. So I've grayed everything out except the bones. So the bigger one is the tibia and the smaller one is the fibula. So you can kind of see what, uh, I'll give you a second to kind of determine which is the lateral aspect and which is the medial aspect of the leg here. All right, so the medial aspect obviously is with the bigger tibia and then the lateral is with the fibula. 
And so now we're looking at the posterior aspect of the leg, and here are the medial head and the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. And if you compare that to the solus, you see how much bigger the solus muscle is compared to the gastrocnemius. Okay, and so these are the superficial uh, calf muscles, posterior muscles. And now we're going to look deeper, and these are the ones that we looked at uh, in the second part of the video, the posterior flexors. Okay, so here's the tibialis posterior, right, right behind the tibialis. Okay, remember it inverts the foot and this is with plantar flexation. And the flexor digitorum longus, this flexes digit number one. And then the flexor hallucis longus flexes phalanges two through five. Okay. So I just kind of wanted to give you a different aspect, a different view of the muscles to see where they're located. Um, so maybe you can compare how close they are to the bone compared to, uh, you know, the deeper muscles compared to the more superficial muscles. And then the anterior aspect, the, the extensor muscles, uh, we'll take a look at those in another video. So, um, and that's these right here that I have highlighted. Okay, well, uh, that does it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and good luck in your studying.